He just All right, passed. so Jeff's about to walk in, so everybody, let's act yeah. like we're in the locks. What's All the right. picking order? It's we're you're going. First. In. Yeah, yeah you're, I'm first. Yeah, you're going first. Okay, yeah, awesome. I, I don't think actually, but for this, yes. Yeah, for this. Okay, right. for this, we go are. first. Okay, what do you take? Uh, man, I like a lot of these. Um, White County plus twelve at Lumpkin. That's a big line. I know I took White County outright. Welcome back, Jeff. By the way, Jeff um, finally made it back to the show. Yeah, so, finally. Uh, y'all started. Uh, me? Yeah, so, yeah, definitely. And we had no clue where you went. I went to get some water. Well. No. So the opposite of what we imagined. You lost your lock. Sorry. Uh, I lost my lock? Yep. Yeah, you don't get a lock now. That's not true. Caleb just picked the lock that you wanted. Well, how do we know? What did he pick? What did you take? We're not recording. Where did you go? Oh, okay. (laughs) Well, I mean, actually, we are. (laughs) Like, we're 100% recording. We just weren't rolling. Like most everything in this building, I can't trust anything anybody says. We're in the news media. Cold open. Cut. (laughs) Welcome to week 10 of the Friday Game Night Pick'em Show. I am back in the house, folks. Yes, I Welcome am. Welcome back, Bo. Thank Woo. you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, man, it's week 10. We are zooming through this season. And welcome, everyone, to the show. I'm Bo, along with Jeff, Caleb, Seth, and Walker. I got it right this time. Wow. He said my name right. Well, Something's hey, changed. Hey, he's, hey, he's, hey. he's coming off his bye week. Yeah. He's had a chance to get prepped. And get ready. Let's go. <laughs> By the way, just for everybody in the comments, I am taking suggestions for words that start with W to put as <laughs> Williford, Walker, whatever his name is. We have already gone through the yeah. entire dictionary. No, definitely going? not. I'm just running out of ideas. Have you used walkie-talkie yet? No, oh, that's a good oh, one. Oh, Actually, good one. I think I have. I might have. Oh, okay. I might okay. have. All right. Well. It would be nice just to see my name one time, right? Just one time. You did when the show started. He asked very politely. Did you? Yeah, but like. But nah. 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 Okay. okay. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, week nine, by the way. I know we're in week 10, but week nine, man, that Buford Mill Creek game, even though we didn't see the ending of it on <laughs> more TV. On, more on that later. <laughs> more I, on that later, obviously. I, I did. Uh, yeah, you did. Congratulations. Did. You were yeah, the only one who saw the end of it. You couldn't see the field from what you told me. I'm sorry? You couldn't see the field from what you told me. No, so the ESPN, yeah, and you know the ESPN people were standing up on the front row, mm-hmm. and so me and Stan Archery and uh, and and uh, Will from uh, the GDP, we're we're just looking at each other, and so me and uh, me and Stan Archery, I called up my uh, Hulu Live subscription on my computer. He called up his YouTube TV, and we're we're watching. So the who game. was ahead? I'm sorry. Was Hulu ahead or was YouTube ahead? I'm not. Sh- I I, I yep. can't remember, okay. but all I know is you know. We're 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 doing we're going up you know we're trying to look at the field and we're looking at the screen and it was crazy. Was it like this? Thank, yeah, thank you for mocking okay. me though. Yeah, never never miss it. So how did it end, Jeff? How did it end? Because uh, you Bu- saw it, we I didn't. did. So Buford uh, hit a hit a pass to about the seven or eight yard line with you know under twenty seconds to go, and they had three great shots into the end zone, just could not connect. Uh, two really good plays by uh, the Mill Creek defenders to bat some balls down, and they just – Buford could not connect. They had no timeouts, and the run game was non-existent. They had 20 yards uh, on 15 carries. Well, I think the main takeaways from that game, number one, the Buford offensive line problems that we had had documented earlier in the season, and we kept thinking – yeah, you know, they'll they'll work through it. They'll get it figured out. So far, they really haven't yeah, because they can, standards, they, it's really they continue good. to have problems there. A, they they struggle to run the ball against against really good defenses, and B, they struggle to protect Dylan Riola. And I, I from what I watched of the game, I actually thought Dylan Riola played very very well. Look, he was nineteen Great. for forty five by my stats. I mean, depending, you know, I think there's a you know depending on which stat thing you look like, it's pretty close. Uh, Buford dropped seven or eight passes. So those numbers could have been well over 300 well, yards the, for him. The one that was really devastating was the the one in the end zone uh, uh, that would have given them yeah. the lead. Uh, I think that would have made it 24-17 Buford. Now, I don't know what happens from that point well, on in the game, but that drop was particularly devastating. And I, I don't know if you remember they this. they fumbled they, the next play. They had a 55-yard gain down to the one that was called back on an ineligible receiver because apparently they covered up the tight end mm. who went out for a pass. So that was a huge, huge play in that game because Buford would have taken their first lead at that point. And I think 
they would have held on to win I, that game. I did think that Buford's defense played well in spots, but I thought it was a very well called game by Mill Creek oh, because great, their, great calls. Yeah, the the I, the draw play to Cam Robinson. <laughs> They didn't call it very often, but they picked their spots flawlessly because every time they called it, they called it exactly when Buford's defense wasn't expecting it. It was a 20, 30-yard gasher for Robinson. Listen, you guys are too young to probably remember. That That was the old Dallas Cowboys draw play back there with Danny White and some of the guys from the 70s and 80s. They just absolutely murdered people with that draw play. That was a beautiful – that was my favorite play of the entire game because you don't see a, a like a true draw – anymore in football and it was just a it was a great call at the great time well, that was a, it was a great game it could have gone either way that was my first look at uh dylan riola up close and personal he makes it look very easy i can definitely see why he was so highly recruited he doesn't move around a lot but he has a lot of subtle things and a flick of the wrist and it's 50 yards and he put some dimes on some guys that they they just dropped. So Walker, so. Hey, a great finish to that game, but but let's move on here to regions because we're getting into the region Ooh. races. They're getting hot and heavy. What are some of the regions that you've looked at uh, that that you know are just insane right now? I mean, I, I think we're still very early in eight two a. I think that uh, Union and East Jackson still have. Uh, a fighting chance to getting a home playoff game. Uh, They both got blown out uh, in their most recent games in region play. Interesting to see how they bounce back this week. 7-3A became really interesting in that Wesleyan, or Wesleyan, I should say, is just barely hanging on uh, against teams that, you know, Mm. maybe they should win, maybe they shouldn't, who knows. But Lumpkin County now just two wins away from their first region title and then two, three, four still very much up for grabs and could be any team in that, uh, that three of Dawson white and Wesleyan getting whatever spots eight, four A is interesting. Eight, five A is interesting. Eight, six A is interesting. I mean, uh, there's not a region that we cover here that doesn't have a lot of things that could happen to make this thing to where, we have no idea what's going to happen. And there's also routes where it's just a no-brainer. It, that's right. why it's so interesting is that everything's still on the table. Look, 8-4-A to me is the one. I think yeah, you have six, I agree. six teams within a game and a half from second down to seventh. And yeah. depending on who wins and who you, – you, I mean, like East or Scythe can mm-hmm. end up uh, tied for second or I think drop all the way to sixth. Depending, you know, with one week left to go for them, mm-hmm. you know, depending on if they can win and who else wins, I, I you know, yeah, I'd be really <laughs> nervous if I'm in 840 right now. Uh, if you're North Hall, you kind of like where you're sitting, even though you still have East Forsyth to play. And Cedar Shoals. And Cedar Shoals. But Cedar they're, Shoals. They're, look, they're at four and two, <clears throat> and right now that's good for second place yeah. all alone. You know, they're, they're, they're in this. If I'm, white, the, if I'm North Hall, I'm feeling pretty good this week. They're off. And the one that's really interesting, and this is going to be a nice segue for you, Bo. Eight single A Division One. Ooh. And speaking, there's a massive game this kid, week. Huge. And if the Tigers of Commerce get the win, there's another massive game next week. No. Mm. Yeah. And then that's the end of region play. And it's going to be a great finish, no matter what I think. And you look at this region; is there's four teams in it. Athens Christian is very. Bad. Bad. Yeah. Bad. Uh, 17 Fair. players running clock last week in the second quarter just because of the lack of players. But Jeff, Commerce and Elbert, man, I know you talked to both <laughs> coaches this week. Very interesting matchup. The Granite Bowl is going to be rocking on oh, Friday. Man, my fa- One of my, if not my favorite place, it's certainly in the top two or three to go to a high school football game in the state of Georgia. It is always a great atmosphere. It's really cool when the prisoners come out and they're up there mm-hmm. on the, uh, you know, looking down on the field. I mean, it, it is crazy, uh, crazy at the Granite Bowl. Uh, this is going to be a great, great football game. you got a really balanced team. Uh, with Elbert County, they got you know a thirteen hundred yard passer, got a thousand yard rusher, they got a uh, a couple of really good receivers. Their defense, um, you know, according to Shannon Jarvis, an old buddy of ours, uh, on you know at Access WDUM when he was at Mill Creek and we covered Mill Creek, um, always loved talking to him. He thought their defense put in their best performance of the season last week and feels that they're ready to kind of build off of that. But then when you look at what what's coming, you got two thousand yard rushers. That may be the only team in the state with commerce. In any classification, is two thousand yard rushers, and that's not even counting the quarterback who's got three or four hundred yards and is sneaky good with his arm too. Um, 
listen, I, I did, it's going to be a great game. Uh, I expect probably a low-scoring game. But the last time, I, I, to me, one of the interesting things is the last time Commerce played a really balanced attack, it was Hebron. They gave up 31 points, and they lost that game. You know, and I think when you look at Hebron and you look at Elbert, they're very similar. Elbert might even be a little bit better. So I, I think that's where this game is won and lost. I think it's that commerce defense and how they're able – if they're able to slow down and limit the uh, uh, Elbert County opportunities, I think that that, you know, could help that offense kind of just wear down Elbert. But I think it's going to be very, very close. Uh, we got Scott, Col- Scott Talbert coming on later to make picks uh, with commerce and, you know, his daughter – Ivy, really good field goal kicker, maybe one of the best in the area. Could come down to something like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else got that, thoughts? That, <laughs> this, this is what I think. What just Thomas happened? Is offense. <laughs> what happened? We locked eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very Coming up next week Seth, on the show. Seth, Seth, I'm very uncomfortable right now. <laughs> Me too. That silence was not usual. I one of you is always usually talking. Yeah, it's um yeah, okay. Walker Here, <laughs> Walker at home. Commerce's offense is tough to prepare for as it is, just with the amount of rushing that they do and the way that they do it with the triple option. I would not be shocked though to see JP Allen throwing the ball on the first drive for commerce just to try and keep Elbert County honest. You know, at, being in the Elbert or in the Granite Bowl in Elbert County, it's going to be a hostile environment for Commerce. Probably one of the most hostile they've played in all year. The question is, can that offense get rolling enough? And I think that's really going to boil down to can JP Allen throw the football well enough to get Elbert to get some guys out of the box and open things up for Tyshawn Wiggins for Jaden Daniels while they're well rested you know that there's going to be eight or nine in the box every single play for the Blue Devils. I, I really think the big key here is. You know, Elbert County had a great defensive performance against Raven County. That's a spread attack. Now they're playing a completely different offensive system, mm-hmm. a I formation option team, which is extremely rare in high school football. Um, Tyshawn Wiggins, I think he's going to kind of do what he does. To me, the key is, are those big play opportunities there on the perimeter for Jaden Daniels? If they are, he's going to pop two or three of them. They, in and of themselves, may be enough to keep commerce in the game, even if they're struggling in other facets. So that, to me, is the interesting thing. Is Elbert County able to own the edges and prevent the big plays from Jaden Daniels? I think Tyshawn Wiggins is just going to kind of do what he does because he's going to get so many opportunities on the inside. But that perimeter game for commerce is really what I'm most interested to see if they're able to pop the big play down the sideline that they were able to do so much with Jaden Daniels. Yeah, the preparation for this game for Elbert, you know, preparing for the spread a week ago against Rabin County and doing what they did, uh, you know, against Rabin County. That was Rabin County's first region loss since 2013, by the way. Something like that. Ten years. Ten years. 50-plus game. crazy. And you know that long, like, streak that Florida has of, like, Florida hasn't been shut out since whatever. Um, You know, me and Walker were actually watching that because I started looking back because it was 21-3 to in the fourth quarter, and I'm like, when's the last Mm -hmm. time Rabin County Mm -hmm. has not scored a touchdown at home? And we looked it up. You got to go all the way back, all the way back to 2010. I spent several 2010. minutes. Wow! I spent several minutes digging that up, and then as soon as I found the stat, Raven County scored a touchdown and made all my <laughs> words. Yeah, Second, he sent so, it to me. That you're was pre- prep for the tailgate show, but but yes, the preparation. Two different styles of offense. This one, I, I agree with Caleb. Just said the outside edge is going to be key there. Also agree with what Walker said about the passing game with JP Allen. You know. Will they try to set that up first, or will they just try to go straight at him, or will they try to get on the edge? I think Mark Hollers is going to have a fantastic game plan, as well as Shannon Jarvis. And I do kind of agree with perhaps a field goal might make the difference in this game at the Granite Bowl. All right, let's move on to East Forsyth at Madison County. Another important, speaking of Region 8 a East Forsyth right now sitting pretty good. They're in second place. If they can knock off Madison County, they will stay in second place. They have Chesity and North Hall left on the schedule. Madison County, though, they're going to be like Hornets, even though they're the Red Raiders, because they were upset <laughs> last week against Cedar Shoals, mm-hmm. Caleb, in a game that you and I did not expect to happen. Yeah, really a couple of chaotic results in 8-4-A. You had that one, and then you had Walnut Grove mm-hmm. beating Cherokee yes. Bluff. Two mm-hmm. games nobody saw coming in 8-4-A. And the heartbreaking thing for Cherokee Bluff is if they beat <laughs> Walnut Grove, then that Madison County loss yep. would have really been impactful for the Bears. So that really hurt them. But on to this game, I, I'm, I'm interested to see really nobody – 
not named North Oconee, has stopped the Madison County offense. We saw Cherokee Bluff slow it down a little bit, but we haven't seen anybody actually stop it. I I don't know that East Forsyth's defense, I think they can hold their own in this game. I've said that about North Hall, and that ended up to be not true at all. But I think East Forsyth's defense can hold their own in this game. I think I like them a little bit more than I like, say, the North Hall defense. But, again, my question is more about the East Forsyth offense. Again, I, it's hard to get that three-point performance at Cherokee Bluff out of your mind because that was the last time we saw them, you know, in a, in a – I know the North Oconee game was a big game, but nobody expected them to win that game. And they got a special teams touchdown that helped them in that regard, too. It's been a while since we've seen that East Forsyth offense really have a lot of success. I think they're going to need to to get the win this week, even if their defense plays well. I would agree with that totally. Uh, they're going to have to score some points. I think this game is won or lost. If this matchup, uh, the East Forsyth defense, they're fifth still in Class 4A. They're only giving up 13 points a game. But Madison County is 10th in scoring in 4A. They're averaging just under 38 points a game. Whichever unit wins that battle, I think that's where this game is won or lost. The East Forsyth offense may be able to scratch out a touchdown or two, but can they? Can that defense hold them to you know half of their season average? If they can't, I'm not sure East Forsyth can win this game. But didn't, and I'm looking it up right now because I feel like East Forsyth did really well defensively against North Oconee last week. Held them to just 44 points, a team that's averaging over 50 point or over 55 points a game, and then they scored 20 points against a North Oconee defense right. that has been really shutting down people. I think this East Forsyth team is hitting their stride at the right time. Yes, Madison County is very good on the offensive side, but I think this East Forsyth offense is going to be able to have success against Madison County. And I like East Forsyth's defense to be able to slow down that offense and keep this a close enough game to where it's going to come down to who's holding the ball last and how much time do they leave the other team on that last score. I think that's really what this game boils down to is who's going to have the ball for the last possession and how much time will they have to try and drive the field. Yeah, no, I agree with you on that. You know, you look at the 19 points they scored last week in East Forsyth. They've had some offensive struggles, although the last game that I watched it was a Cedar Shoals game. They put 35 points up against Cedar Shoals, and that was early in the season. You know, but since then, they have struggled a little bit offensively. So, But I think this East Forsyth defense is good enough to slow Madison down. They slowed them down last year. Unfortunately, the second half turned ugly for them, but they slowed them down in the first half. They could put four quarters together defensively against uh, Camden Smith, the quarterback for Madison County, slow the triple option down like they did last year in the first half. I think this is going to be a close game, you know, in the fourth quarter. So listen to the game and watch the game because I think it's going to be a really good game coming down the stretch. All right, White County at Lumpkin County, a, a big Region 7-3A battle. And let's open this conversation with, Seth, you awake? Yeah. Jeff Hart's stat of the show. Here we go. Roll that beautiful music. Here's some things you need to know. It's Jeff Hart's interesting stat of the show. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is your segment. Oh, yep. is this my segment? This is your segment. Oh, okay, my segment. Yeah. Well, the floor I, is yours. Yeah. You uh, can, oh, I got yeah. yeah. Well, you yeah. know, the, the jingle gets in my head, and then it well, just kind of yeah. distracts And you know it's rare for me to not start a Lumpkin County conversation. It is. That's how, that's 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 how important so this rare. segment is. That is so true, and, and I apologize, Walker. Yeah, so you, no, it, I, it's you, okay. You deserve it after being everybody's hero last week. Yeah. Uh, you're welcome, by the way. Wind beneath uh, our wings. Although Jeff. I did not get a personal call from J.J. Watts. You did not. J.J., where are you? What's your step? Um, hey, you know, I, I think uh, the White County offense against the Lumpkin County defense, I think that's where this thing, uh, something is going to have to hit, give here, guys, because, you know, the Warriors have scored the second most points in 7-3-A. They're averaging 33 points a game in region play. Um, but, and they have not scored less than 24 that's points in stats, any game this season. Well, it's like a series of stats. But. The Indians have only given up more than 21 one time this year, and that was the Union County in their opener. So since the first game of the season, that defense has gotten a little bit better, a little bit better. I think that's where this game is won or lost right there. If uh, if Lumpkin slows down the White County defense, it's going to be a long night for White County. But if White so, County is able to, to, to hit some big plays, I think this could be one an exciting one of the best games of the week. Well, I've got something to share that I've looked up about this game as well. Okay. Yes. Uh, do we have it's the It's Caleb Hutchins. Did you know? 
Here we go. Did you know from Caleb? Yeah. Ding. Okay. I feel like I constantly am. I'm getting upstage now with this. Uh, you no, know, you're not. What, you're downstage. Go ahead. All right. So, uh, I, I, yeah, I, not as good as Jeff's thing, but I'll take it. Um, so, listen. <laughs> Lumpkin County is 7-0. and It's only the second time they've ever been 7-0. and Their best start ever was 8-0. That was back in 1967. I don't think anybody, well, you might have been alive, <laughs> but nobody else was. Uh, so, Lumpkin County wow. is also. What are, what are you saying? So Am I if, old? So, if Lumpkin County wins this game, mm-hmm. they could get to 8-0 for just the second time ever. Also, I was alive the last time that happened. You were. <laughs> this is also the latest into a calendar year Lumpkin has ever still been unbeaten. The o- October 20th is wow. the day they play White County. The last time the the latest they have ever been the, the latest into a calendar year they've ever suffered their first loss was October 20th. Uh-oh. Do you know who that Uh-oh. loss on that October 20th of 1967 was to? It's White County. It was to the White County yeah. Warriors. Uh-oh, Walker. And a White County team that was about where this White County team is right now, record-wise. So, White County has done this to Lumpkin in this exact situation before. What say you, Walker? Hey, before you say something, Walker, uh, the next time you dig this deep, Caleb, please let us get this on camera. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I want to see the light bulb go off. Not quite the exact situation. Caleb, because like you mentioned, Lumpkin was 8-0 at that point. They're 7-0 this time around. That game was in Cleveland. This game's in Dahlonega. That's fair. So uh, not quite the exact situation, but I see your point. Jeff, I I don't disagree with you in terms of this game being on the White County offense versus the Lumpkin County defense, which one gives. I actually think it's the other way around. Can White County stop Lumpkin County's rushing attack? Mm -hmm. Lumpkin County's second in 3A in points scored this year. I mean that they they put up points and they put up points fast with Mason Sons and they have big play potential. White County has that too, but the question is, can you stop the run game of Lumpkin County? Nobody's been able to do that yet this year. Does White County have the answer? Going to be an interesting thing to try and figure out in Delano. And that's kind of the thing that I was thinking as well. When you're talking about Lumpkin's offense against White's defense or vice versa, whatever that is, Mason Sullins is a big running back. I mean, Leading he's, the he's got over 1,300 yards rushing, what, 21 touchdowns. I mean, the kid's insane as far as his rushing go. But but I don't think we're giving a whole lot of credit here to Lumpkin County's offensive line. Of course, we got to bring that up because anytime you've got a 1,300-yard rusher, there's a reason for that, and it's because the big dude's up front. So tip of the hat to the Lumpkin County offensive line for one. Secondly, Cal Faulkner proved the other night that he could throw the football. Now, he really hasn't had to throw the football mm-hmm. much until, you know, I guess Coach Webb just wanted to see what he could do. He's very efficient at that. My question is, does Lumpkin come out throwing – or do they come out rushing? Because I think maybe Heathwell might try to go downfield and see if he can establish the passing game just to throw the White County defense off. Not sure about that, but I think it's going to be a really tough task for White County to slow down either Cal Faulkner or Mason Sullivan well, you know, on Friday. And the other thing that I want to see, too, this is the second time this year that we've seen Lumpkin County play a really, really good quarterback. Mm-hmm. We saw Ben Brown for for Wesley, and they played the, they played him. Now they're playing Trip Nix for White County. Those are the two top quarterbacks, I think, in terms of throwing the ball in Region 7-3A. The difference, I think, between White County and Wesleyan, and I know Wesleyan beat White County, but that was a you know yeah. that, that was a game decided by a Harris. White should have won Harris game, by the way. Nip and tuck. Right. I think White County is a little more balanced offensively than I Wesleyan. I would agree with that. With Ryan Fowler at yes. running back, I think they present some threats offensively that Wesleyan just doesn't, even though I think – Wesleyan's passing attack probably a little better than White County's. White County runs the ball better than Wesleyan does. That's going to present a challenge for Lumpkin's defense that they haven't necessarily faced to the degree that White County will present it in terms of being balanced. Well, Jeff, let's give let's give Ryan. I'll let you go with this, but let's give Ryan Fowler some credit as Absolutely. well for for White County mm-hmm. because what, what is it, Coach uh, Coach Bennett calls him a Brahma Bull, <laughs> something uh, like that. Yeah, you know because you know he's had a good season. He was injured last season, but he's had had a decent season for White County. And also, let's give Trip Nick credit because he is a dual threat for that offense he is look i think what all of this discussion says there's great matchups all over the yes, field I agree. no matter who has the ball it's going to be a great game should be one of the best games of the night in the area that's pretty much about it the deciding factor for me can lumpkin county put consistent pressure on trip nicks with their front four 
and can trip Nicks make plays on the run. And uh, Because the way Wesleyan was able to get their points against Lumpkin County, a lot of times Lumpkin County had Ben Brown running figure eights in the backfield. Right. He was able to find a guy downfield and make a play. Trip Nicks is going to have to do that at least one or two times Friday night for White County to win the game. All right, guys, let's get to the rundown picks of the show. But first, we got to welcome our guest picker in-house. It's Commerce Soccer Coach Scott Talbert. Welcome to the show, oh, Coach. Hey, where's right. its applause? Yeah, where's the applause? Where is it? Yeah, where, I where is it? Come I mean, on. my goodness. It's on this one. There we go. <laughs> I mean, he's built a juggernaut over there with that girls' soccer program. Uh, I mean, his daughter is I mean, 100 and something goals in one season. I mean, that, wow, that's insane. But you got two or three other scorers on that wait, team as wait. well. Wait, his daughter is also on the good team. in football and in football, as she is which, the kicker for the Commerce which one Tigers. Is football right. <laughs> and which one is football? Football is soccer, Jeff. Oh, okay. I mean, come on, dude. You got two or three other scorers on that team, not just Ivy. It's that funny that Bo picked that one up, seeing as he disappears during Can football season. Can you let Coach season. answer this question? Yes, we we that we've had several others along with Ivy. Ivy's just sort of been the she's just sort of been like the root of the program. Um, she's the rock. She got it all started. But we've had Chloe Diaz, who's now playing up at North Georgia. Uh, Kate Hill, who graduated last year, unfortunately. Um, but we've got a, a group of younger girls coming up that are just solid. Absolutely so. Well, what's going to be the prognosis? You know, what's your, uh, I, I, I guess, scouting report on your own team? Because, I mean, you've had a, a state finals appearance and another deep run. What, what's the scouting report on this group? Um, well, I mean, we got I, we got Ivy, so I think we're going to be good <laughs> scoring-wise. Um, okay. If, for us, if we're not honestly going in, if we're not 20-0 and 0 or 19-1, and 1, then to us, that's a failure. If I'm not winning region, that's a failure. If I'm not going deep, if I'm not playing for a state championship or being close to that, then that's a failure. So, And that's the way the girls look at it. Well, Coach, uh, before we get to the rundown picks, let's talk a little about Ivy and her kicking game on the football team. Uh, and she's also uh, – she has a scholarship, right? Ivy School Scholarship, yeah, I think correct? She, she told me she's going to be valedictorian. So she's, she's a great soccer player, kicking field goals on the football team, and valedictorian. She got that from her mother. <laughs> all the athletic stuff all the athletic stuff she got yeah you're just guy. a lawyer yeah. i mean there's those are yeah, a dime a yeah. dozen i mean really <laughs> but the the smart she definitely got from her mom all of that she yeah smarts and looks from a mother athletic ability this dude <laughs> All right, well, let's see what your picking ability is, guys. Priorities. Let, 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 at least, just, at least we got the priorities right there on the athletic All right, ability. So here's the pick order. It's uh, Jeff, me, Caleb, Walker, and Seth. Well, you got guest pick. Uh, we also first. have – wait, hold on. You got let me go back. I did the wrong order. locks. That's the locks order. The pick order is guest picker, Seth, Jeff, Walker, me, and Caleb. That's how we're going. So, Coach, you're going to be the first picker uh, – on every game. On every game now. So let's start at the top and let's go with a Buford at Decula game, guys. All right. Now, Buford <clears throat> coming off the loss last week to Mills Creek, they're going to be out for blood. Oh. Um, you got Dylan Riola, who's he's really, really what Georgia's next quarterback, we think. Ooh. Um, 14 touchdowns, I think, no interceptions. So I expect. I absolutely expect Buford to just beat the crap out of <laughs> out of the Kula. You, you know they're going to be mad. Oh, yeah. Do not they're cut that, out. Seth. Do I, not I ain't cut, cut nothing. That. I, that's no. awesome. That's the best pick we've had this entire season by anyone right there. <laughs> <laughs> beat the this crap is going to be a beat down. Seth? Seth? Oh, yeah, give me Buford. Oh, yeah, I feel bad. I feel sorry for Dekula after last week. Yeah. That poor guys, um, and it's a rival game, so you know Buford always likes but to is win it? that one. But is it? Yeah, Buford. But is it Buford? A rival game, no doubt. It is a rival. Also, Decula. Also, Decula's bad. They're one and six. <laughs> yeah, uh, stole my <laughs> line. I mi- I forgot my line. This Tur- is becoming terrible. a theme. Like <laughs> terrible wolves. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> wolves here. <laughs> Say no more. Buford. Decula's coming off a loss to Central Gwinnett. Uh, I'm going to take Buford big. Mm. Huge. Mm. All right, Dawson County at Gilmer. All right, guys. 
I'm gonna throw y'all wrench in this one. Uh-oh. Oh, oh gets even though Dawson County is two and six and Gilmer's five and three, I watched Gilmer County because Commerce played Gilmer County in preseason and just beat the brakes off of them. I've seen Gilmer up close, and, I, and I'm I'm gonna take Dawson. Uh, so, give me Dawson. I, I, you know, I'm gonna go with the wrenches and uh, dodgeball here. I'm gonna take Dawson also. Although I don't think that's wrenches, coach. <laughs> I think the Tiger offense can score points against Gilmer's defense. They're not uh, they're not a great defense, even though they can slow down the game. I think it's low scoring, but I think the Tigers get the win in LJ. Go Tigers! Whoa, whoa. this is a uh, he four, took his own school. This is basically for a playoff spot, mm-hmm. probably because it probably. Is. you're going to have is. Lumpkin, is. White, and Wesleyan are right. going to get in. This is really for the four spot. Two teams who I think are both coming off of very good performances last week. You had Dawson taking Wesleyan down to the wire and Gilmer beating Pickens, their biggest rival. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go against the grain. I'll take the Bobcats at the, home. The Bob Bobcats. Yep. He's trying to pick up games. I am trying to pick he, up He's games. trying to work up his, his It hasn't his been working picking. for him, yeah, Walker. It's, so it's been a tough listen, I'm, at that, keep doing that. I'm at that point in the game. i got to start taking shots to the end zone. So, <laughs> East for Scythe in Madison County. All right, here you got two five and two teams coming at it. I love a guy that knows his. He, he's he's all over this stuff. Absolutely. <laughs> With uh, East Forsyth, you got the Mars kid, Trip Mars. I think he's averaging like 130 points or 130 yards a game. Mm-hmm. Madison County is scoring 38 points a game. I just don't see East Forsyth able to stop Madison County. I'm, I'm taking Madison County. I'm gonna have to agree with Coach there after seeing North Hall play Madison, and I w- will be at that one. You and me, Bo. Uh, I'm gonna have to go with. <laughs> woo, <laughs> was that for being there with me or yeah, just? Yeah, oh, was, oh yeah. thanks for that. <laughs> uh, all right, fine. Madison County. We'll move along. <laughs> wow. Well, we discussed this game earlier. This was one of the hardest games for me to pick. Got you know, East Forsyth's almost in a must-win position at this point with the way some of the things are shaking out in eight four a. But it's Madison. It's on the road. I would love to pick the Broncos. I'm going to give them some locker room fuel. I'm also going to take Madison County. <laughs> some fuel. See, Jeff, I think because it's a must win, the Broncos are have played really well in clutch games uh, this year. I mean, the Cherokee Bluff game we didn't think was a must win for East Forsyth, so I think they kind of overlooked the Bears in that game. Ooh. This is definitely a must win now. I take the uh, Broncos to beat the Raiders on the road. Look, the only thing in this game is Madison County's coming off that upset loss to Cedar Shoals, as we talked about earlier in the show. Um, and if you remember last year, in, at East Forsyth, the Broncos went up 17 nothing, and then ended up losing that game by a touchdown. I think the Broncos are going to be laser-focused, though, even though they've got to travel an hour and a half to get to Danielsville uh, from East Forsyth. I'm going to go with the Broncos in this one. You know, I I think East Forsyth's defense will have a better showing out there than what North Hall's yeah. did because I think East Forsyth's probably a little better on that side of the ball than North I Hall. I would agree with that. I just don't know that I can rely on the East Forsyth offense because even the best defensive performances – Minus North Oconee that we've seen against Madison County. Red Raiders are still getting 20 points on the board. Plus, do I feel like I'm at a point where I can depend on East Forsyth to get me 20-plus on the road against a good team? I'm not there. I'm going to take Madison County. Oh, I just picked up two games on you. Um, (laughs) (laughs) East Hall at Cherokee Bluff. All right. This is two very average teams, to be honest with you. East Hall, two and five. Uh, Cherokee Bluff is three and five. Um. East Hall depends on Jamarcus Harrison, the quarterback. I think he's averaging about 220 yards a game, throwing and running. Um, Cherokee Bluff has the Hulsey kid who's averaging over 130 yards a game, rushing. The problem is East Hall only scores about 15 points mm-hmm. a game. They can't score. I mean, they, they're good between the 20s, but they just cannot score. So, Cherokee Bluff. I'm going to go bluff, too. I'm also going to go back and replay that moment where Jeff and Caleb did the exact same <laughs> at the exact same time. We'll go back and replay that. Yeah, I don't know. Now, Coach, I you know, look, I hate to disagree with you, Coach, but uh, I'm not sure the bluff is really an average team. They've had a, a tough schedule. and They've, they've lost some. Hey. I, 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 think that the, I, I think that this is a team on the, you know, coming up, honestly. And the defense, after what I saw, what they did with uh, East Forsyth, no doubt bluff is going to win this game going away yeah i think that the bluff schedule has been the hardest part for them this year i think 
when we get the reclass next year and we see where they end up and what region and mm. how that schedule lays out oh, that yeah. this Cherokee Bluff team is it, they might be a playoff team in any other region uh that they could have been in 3A uh or any other 4A region just depending on the schedule I, I like the Bears to win this game running away with it you know, I, I tend to agree with Coach on East Hall good between the 20s yes. because they really are good between the 20s, and they've had a trouble scoring this season. So for that reason, I'm going to go uh, mainly with Bluff just because Bluff's defense has shown that it can be really good. So uh, the Bears in this one. Yeah, Bluff's the better team. I'll take the Bears. Jackson County at Lanier in a crucial Region 8 6A battle, man. Playoffs are on the line for both of these teams. Absolutely. All right, Jackson County is coming in at four and four, I think. Lanier six and two. Now, Jackson County is actually a five A school that petitions the GHSA to play up for the only reason just to get out of the same region as Jefferson. That's the only reason why they do it. <laughs> there it is. And I am a Jefferson graduate, even though I'm all commerce now. But I am a Jefferson. I'm graduate. glad somebody said that other than us. <laughs> yeah. So that's the only reason why Jackson County is playing at six A right now, just so they don't have to deal with Jefferson. <laughs> But this game is actually, I think, going to be a little closer than people might think, but I do think that Lanier is going to pull away in the fourth quarter and take it. Seeing Jack, I saw Lanier play North Forsyth earlier this year. I was pretty impressed by that Lanier team. I'm going to take Lanier. I've seen them both play. I uh, I really love what Jackson County is able to do now in the passing game, uh, but I've also seen Lanier. I think – you know, I, I really thought Jackson County's defense was going to be better than it has shown at times this year. I'm going to take Lanier, but, you know, look, the, the Jackson County, they, they could win out and still not make the playoffs. So they, they need a lot of help, but they have to win this game. But I'm just not sure at Lanier if they're going to have quite enough. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take Lanier. Yeah, the, the, the ranch is going to be crazy. I believe in this one, Jackson County, as you said, is needing that, that, that win. They need some help too. Uh, but I'm going to go with the Longhorns in this one. Yeah, I got Lanier too. I think, uh, you know, Jackson County must win situation. The problem is they're they're walking into a hornet's nest, and uh, so I'll take the Longhorns as well. Hey, speaking of Jefferson, I'll, I'll take the Panthers too. Oh yeah, we we, just kind uh, of sorry, we right jumped over, over you. My there. bad. My I mean, bad. We did. We yeah. skipped yeah. right well, over Walker. Hey Walker. Hey Walker. Hey Walker. Hey, 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 Walker. Hey, Walker. Hi. Hey, Walker. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Uh, Thanks, man. <laughs> Good. I'm just the, glad it wasn't me this time. The massive voice and word jumble that just happened in my headphones. <laughs> okay, let's move. Speaking of Jefferson, Jefferson is at Loganville. We all know who's at Loganville now. Former Jefferson coach Gene Cathcart. All right, Jefferson six, seven and zero. Oh, uh, Loganville four and four. Now these teams through the years have always played each other tough. Loganville is led by the Hannah kid, who's the quarterback. Averaging nearly 285 yards a game. Um, Jefferson, of course, has Sammy Brown. Uh, I think he's about 150 yards a game on, on the ground. Both teams put up a lot of points, but I expect Jefferson to easily win behind Sammy Brown and company. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I want to emphasize Sammy Brown and company. You know, I went and talked to those guys this week. Check out our Gaining the Edge segment for um, uh, Sammy Brown and Gavin. Remind me his last name. Marky. Marky. Thank you. Oh, Marky. Wow. I remember you it had something. to him. I know, but, yeah, like, my memory's not good. Monday. Monday. Already? You're only Monday. 20 something. It's already it's you. Bad. It's you guys that are doing this to my brain. That's it's this show. It's, so who did you happen. pick? Loganville, Jefferson. Blows to the head. I'm pick Loganville. Je- Bo, I'm gonna throw hey, this mic at you. Hey, where's Loganville? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> where's Loganville? Only old people like us remember that commercial. <laughs> Seth looked at us like, "What are you that. talking about?" <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm Logan lost, Bill? dude. Where's Loganville? That's, a, that's yeah. a cultural reference, Seth. <laughs> yes. Okay. I'll explain it to you later. Yeah. Oh well, thank you. Okay, I'm Walker, picking Jefferson. I'm not gonna forget you this time. Are we going to forget Jeff, though? Yeah. Oh, I thought I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Walker, you go. (laughs) I I think this game is closer than the experts think. Jefferson wins, but close. This should just be called the FGN (laughs) Bully Show. (laughs) Just let me know when I can chime in. All right, who you got, Oh, can I go now? Uh, Look, uh, Loganville, the the quarterback coach you mentioned, he's leading the state all classes in passing. Uh, The receiver they have, uh, he's leading the state in receiving all classes, mm. but it won't matter. Uh-huh. The defensive Jefferson's too good. I don't see them either one of those guys getting their averages in this game, and uh, Jefferson probably wins this by a couple of touchdowns. How many yards does Sammy have? 
As many oh, as he and, wants. And, yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, going with Jefferson to this one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, coach said that these two normally play each other tight, except for last year where Jefferson just steamrolled Loganville. Mm-hmm. That was a better Loganville team than what they have this year. This is a better Jefferson team than what they had last year. I'll tell you the Dragons big. Okay, before I move on, everybody picked, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> North Forsyth at Hab Central. All right, we got two, three, and four teams. Uh, right now I'm leaning towards North Forsyth. I think this will be a close game, but the problem I see is a, a pretty bad Habersham defense. They just give up too many points to stick around with North Forsyth. North. Go ahead. North Forsyth. Look, Hab Central, we found out, dropped three touchdown passes in their loss to Lanier. So they could have beaten Lanier. Uh, North Forsyth really could have beaten Lanier also. I, I think Hab is better than what the numbers say. But I like the North Hall def- uh, North Forsyth defense a little bit better. So I, I will go with North Forsyth. But I really think this could be a very close game and much better than I think a lot of people anticipate. Yeah, you look at uh, these stats, Walker, on this, this game. It's like close to the same, even though Hab Central's offense is averaging – under 20 points a game. Yeah, I think the Raiders have a better running game than uh, Habersham's defense, uh, so I think the Raiders are going to be able to get the running game going, shorten the game down, and get the win. <laughs> Which Raiders? Ha-ha. <laughs> 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 you caught me. You caught me. I'll take those for size. <laughs> you caught me, Caleb. I thought I was going to get that one fast. The purple Raiders <laughs> or the orange Raiders or the blue Raiders, whatever you want to call them. All right, yeah, I'm going to go with NoFo in this one. Uh, I think their run game, I agree with what you just said. I think their run game's uh, better than Hab Central, so I think that's that's going to be uh, their uh, thing on Friday. So have NoFo I, in this Have one. I picked Habersham Central once this year? I feel like I always pick against Habersham Central. So you're Central. doing it this week. I, I am. I'm picking okay. North yeah. Forsyth. Oh, okay. okay. I promise to pick Habersham Central before the end of the season. You better hurry. Mm. Okay, Riverside at Lakeview Academy. All right, I know Lakeview has been drooling at the mouth since we can <laughs> to play this game. <laughs> this may be, other than Athens Christian, this may be the worst football team in the state of Georgia. And I'm talking about Riverside. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate yep. what's going they on are there, They absolutely Coach. horrible. Absolutely horrible. Now, what, are they going to 400 points this uh-huh. year? Something like that. Look, and they've scored like 46 or something like that. Now, you, now, you guys, you average this out. This is like 6 to 55. That's the average score, 6 to 55. Let that sink in. Mm. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's, That's crazy. So, you're so, going with Riverside. Obviously. <laughs> Riverside? I'm going with Lakeview. No, I, <laughs> Coach, don't let him push you around like that. My goodness. Uh, Seth, he's, you're he's right. You may have to change the, the name of the show. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Bo's trying to bully everybody. Either way, uh, A, I'm going with definitely Lakeview. B, mm. we're going to have to bring Coach back for like – a new segment just called the hard truth and then we're just gonna let him say things well yeah he is holding nothing idea. back i'm telling you he's holding nothing back and I, I look i i can't defend anybody riverside has a very tough situation over there and and we all love uh, uh coach garrett and he is great for this area and you know you kind of feel bad what's going on over there and you know but uh, they just don't have a whole lot right now and mm. uh you know uh, Lakeview, they either scored 50 or they scored six. So I'm going to go with the 50, Coach, and uh, I'm going to go with Lakeview. Yeah, second week in a row, by the way, that Lakeview has been playing a local team. So, Walker, what's your take on this one? I- I'm taking the Lions. I figured out why Bo's so heavy on the microphone and trying to push people around, though. He's making up for last week's absence. Mm. <laughs> yep. He's got to no. get his numbers back Yeah, i got to get my numbers back up. <laughs> Lions, are, by the way. Are you, like, telling me that you keep numbers of just how much of a bully you are to everybody <laughs> yes. else? All right, look. Um, that doesn't seem healthy. <laughs> you know, you, what you said a while ago about Riverside, you know, that is a new crop of, of players every season yeah. for mm-hmm. Coach Garrett. That's, uh, you know, it that, wasn't like that, but after but COVID, after COVID it has you know. Uh, so, yeah, Lakeview gets two in a row here. Uh, they're going to beat Riverside. Yep, I'll take Lakeview. Shiloh at Gainesville. Yay. Coach? All right. Uh, here here it comes. Here it comes. Low. Here's the segment. And there's a reason they're called the low. Uh-huh. Coming in at two and five. Uh, <laughs> Gainesville led by Gavin Hall. Um, I watched him when he was at, um, uh, in, gosh, 
uh, Hebron. 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 Yeah. When yeah. He, yeah. Commerce played Hebron. He was a year. quarterback at Hebron. Yeah. Well, they never, I mean, he was, he was, and he was just a phenomenal athlete or he is just right. a phenomenal athlete. Just, they just hiked it back to him and he just took off running. Nobody stopped him. The kid is just crazy fast. Um, just an unbelievable athlete. But I, I watched him run all over us and I've watched him run all over everybody else since then. But shallow or the low is only scoring 13 points a game. Mm. Um, Gainesville is scoring, out, I think, 40 or so. The, Gainesville is going to beat them by 45, 50 points, as much as they want to beat them by, basically. Yeah, co- coach hit the like lock on the much, head on that one. You mean pretty yeah. much like they've done all season, pretty much, except for a yeah. couple of games, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much as bad as they want to beat somebody. Yeah. Gainesville yeah. by, you know, yeah. whatever they desire. Yeah, this is going to be – it'll be over in the second quarter. If Gainesville – doesn't pull one of their like lapses where they go seven eight minutes and just kind of have do nothing. thirty penalties. Or yeah, something. yeah. Uh, but other than that, yeah, this <laughs> yeah. will this will be over quick. Game tool. <laughs> Elephants that are red. That's who I'm picking. Oh, so you're picking Gainesville. Great. Yes. Yeah. Great. See, I got the yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's going to be another lot of uh, rest time for the first string of Gainesville this week. Big red yeah. wins this one easy. I think the biggest thing that Josh Nibblin and company probably want out of this one is get this thing over with quickly. No injuries. Maybe you get, like Walker said, some rest for the starters and oh, yeah. uh, maybe get the, or Bo, like Bo said, rest for the starters and, uh, you know, get rested up for the home stretch of the season like they were able to do against Appalachia. I think Gainesville can have that kind of game. I'm not saying 63 nothing at halftime, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that to have the same outcome. So, By the way, can we talk about the setup that Coach Niblett gave you on the tailgate show last week to go into your Mill Creek rant about ESPN? That was oh fantastic. My gosh, yeah. <laughs> that was <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> Well, he was talking about how that, you know, Gainesville had been off for two of the last three weeks and that the guys were, he said, uh, the guys ready for that game was like the kids ready to get off of the, the van to go into Disney World. Everybody I could hear just, you yeah. salivating. Yeah, I couldn't wait to talk about Disney. Speaking of Disney. Yeah. That was pretty good. Cutting that away, good. Cutting away yeah. from the final 16 seconds of a great football yeah. game for a preseason basketball and game. And, guys, I was there. And I was there. The ESPN people, first of all, were standing up in the front row of the press box. Yeah. We were in the second row back there. We couldn't see the field. So, me and Stan Archery had to pull the game up on, like, Hulu Live and watch the but, game uh, but on tell, our computer. Tell them you had to tell the, the camera well, guy. Well, I will. But I'm saying we're sitting there watching. And so, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm kind of I'm looking up and I'm looking down trying to see the last – few plays because it was like 20 seconds ago and i'm looking at the screen and then boop it goes straight to the lakers and i yell over well not yell but i kind of waved at the espn camera guy he went back he 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 was just looking at me and i'm like hi jeff how you doing no he did not no he did not anyway but he was like he was like what and i'm like you guys are off the air he goes what i showed him the screen and he just put his head back on, headphones back on, and started talking. And then I could see the announcer kind of look up at him and not sure what to do. They were, it was, it was insane. Twenty seconds ago, Buford's on the seven. How do you cut away to that? Well, I, they, they cut away when Buford yeah. was on the thirty. We didn't even get to see Buford was on the yeah, thirty. Was on the thirty, so yeah. it must have been yeah. okay because they they hit a cut. They hit a long pass. I, I couldn't remember exactly, you know, when the cutaway was. I just know that. <laughs> You know, the, it, yeah, it was crazy. They had three shots into the end zone in the last, like, 15 seconds. And apparently that's not on TV. Okay. Union at East Jackson. Insane. Insane. All right, this this is going to be an interesting game to me. You got Union 5-2. and two, You got East Jackson 6-1. and one. Um, Maybe East Jackson's best season so far. Oh, yeah. Because they, they are historically not a very good football school. Um, now, last week. East Jackson came back down to earth. They got absolutely smoked by Fellowship Christian, mm. I think 55 to 20, 21, something like that. Um, the, the problem with both these teams is if you look at their schedules, honestly, their schedules aren't really that tough, both of them. Um, the, the thing that spooked me more, I think, is Union County, who got just absolutely blown out by Providence Christian that's last the, week. That's the, the concern. That, that game, you know – before that game, I would have probably leaned Union County. Um, but after that, um, I think I'm going to have to go with East Jackson. This may be like an overtime game here. But uh, East Jackson by a point. or That's the line, the, Coach. East Jackson yeah. by one. I was kind of surprised by that. That's the actual line. 
So you're taking the line. You're taking East Jackson. And yeah, I'm taking East. Okay. As bad as I hate to say those words, I'm taking East. Oh, well, they're right down there in the neck of your woods, Coach. <laughs> yeah, that's why I have to say that. Oh. I'm calmer. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. I think this is going to be every bit as close as projected. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to take East Jackson, though. Uh, I'm on the East Jackson bandwagon. You know, this is a very difficult game because uh, I was very surprised by that by that uh, Providence score last week uh, with Union. Uh, I would have figured it had been the other way around. Mm. So I, I I don't know whether to be concerned or are they gonna you know do they got they're they're gonna you know they're they're gonna come out upset after that. I kind of feel that Union is a slightly better team than East Jackson, but East Jackson is home. They're they've got a really good season going. I, this is a very Hard pick. Um, mm. You know, I'm going to go with the established program. Mm. I'm going to go with Union on the road. But, Coach, you're right. This could be an overtime game. Mm-hmm. I'm staying on the bandwagon I've been on since day one this season. Give me the Eagles. At I home. think you built a Coat float. Tails. You built a float Coat for tails. their homecoming parade. Can we get you? the Caleb fly? Uh, not this week, oh, unfortunately. Okay. Do guess, it. I'm going. I'm going with Union County. As much as I still love. Everything about this East Jackson team. Absolutely. I am taking I what I'm riding with the team that's got the better quarterback. I think Union County's got a little bit more uh multiplicity in their offense. You say that. So, Drew Richardson from East Jackson. He's had a good one year. of the he's one of the next up and comers. We're gonna be talking about him for a while. He is, but in terms of a passing threat, I think Union County presents a little more. I think Jack or East Jackson will have problems slowing down Jensen Goble. So I'll take the Panthers on the road. You know, I felt as if Union could battle for that top spot of the region early in the season. Um, uh, not after the Providence Not game. after the Providence game, which was very interesting. Of course, Caleb's talked all season about how good Providence is, and uh, he's telling the truth on that one. Uh, but I'm going to go with the Panthers just because I've been on the Panther bandwagon since the start of the season, so I think Union gets that An win. even split. That's yeah. one of the few times all season we've actually had an even split like that. All right, let's uh, get to this dandy of a game in Region 7-3A, West Hall at Pickens. Oh, I thought we were doing oh. Blake County. Blake County. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, yeah, I kick you, that one you off just get, I'm telling you what, we're, the, the fan mail is going to be flying this week. Wow, yeah, I'm, I'm not rough. coming. I am not coming in after today. I'm done. Yeah, y'all forward my mail. To you. <laughs> Coach, what you got? Well, you got two one and six teams, so we don't have much. Um, <laughs> you, you know, West Hall is just West Hall. Well, they won two games in three years or two games in two. I mean, it's just it's well, they had back to back four win seasons, Coach. They what did. was that, like three or four years ago? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Something like it that. It was. Yeah, the last two years they've won one game each season, I think. Uh, as bad as Pickens County is, I'm just going to have to roll with Pickens County. West Hall just didn't – they don't have an offense. Oh, uh, now the hate mail is coming in. Oh, you called them Pickens <laughs> yeah, County. Yeah. You oh, called them Pickens yeah, County, you, Coach. Oh, my God. Uh, you're going to have to cut that, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, we'll, we'll make a cut or something there. <laughs> My as my camera dies and, and Caleb has to reach for it. Thank you oh, very much, Caleb. Yeah, thank you. You're gonna have to show that in the edit. That'll yeah. be pretty cool. Well, I mean, yeah, it's your main camera, and I can't really cut that. So you're back, Seth. I know I'm back. The lights blinking on the camera, Seth. Yeah, yeah. You're good. There you go. You can make your pick. What's now. your pick? I'm He's stalling. He week. is stalling. <laughs> That's stalling. what it is. I'm What's trying to compose myself. Hi, Seth. You people. How you doing? You're Would you? St- <laughs> <laughs> Who you got? Give me Pickens. I'm going to go with my butt. I, you know, I'm probably about to lose a game to everybody here. Did you just say you were going to go with your butt? That's what, I, my I, butt. Butt. That's what I heard. I, I heard butt. <laughs> I might as well. That is the one is... body part that Gene did not use last week. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is true. There's oh, my goodness. Holy. <laughs> Whoa, what go just happened? Wow. <laughs> what happened? with the butt. I can't see. What happened? Uh, you don't want to know, Seth. Oh, no. You don't want to You'll know. see when you're editing. Am I going to have to blur something out? What does your butt say, Jeff? What go. does my butt say? My butt says I'm going to go with West Hall. That's what my butt says. So I'm going to I, – I, I, look, I, I think West Hall mm. actually is the better overall team. Pickens is just – they're bad. They're not real good. Um, West Hall's a little bit better. All right, Walker. Walker. Taylor. Pickens. I'm going to take Pickens as well. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go with Pickens as well. I knew I was going to be all alone, but I'm going to pick. I'm either going to lose a game or I'm, I'm picking Pickens. 
All right. Not well, picking Kansas. Every right. picking. single time you make that. Exactly. Game. Every uh, single White time. White County at Lovegate County. Here you go, Walker Ticker Ticker. Yeah, but. Uh, this is a big game. But I'm fourth to pick. I know you are. But I know you're excited to pick this game. Coach, what you got in this one? Uh, Lucky County is for real, guys. Uh, the Sullins kid was 185 yards. He's leading the state in rushing, coach. I mean, he's an absolute stud. Uh, scored 20, 21, 22 touchdowns already. Something like I mean, that. He's, he's something else. This should be just a very easy win against White County Ooh. for Lumpkin. Okay. Lumpkin by Ooh. more Ooh. than predicted. I like Lumpkin, too. I think why – look, this is a rivalry game. They hate each other. It's going to be closer than I think people think, but I'm going to go with Lumpkin. I, I do think they're the better rounded team. I actually thought you were going to say Lumpkin by more than White County. <laughs> I thought he was, too. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. I, it's a line. It's a I've said I've line 12, is, plus uh, 12. 12. And Lumpkin minus 12. <laughs> mm. uh, Lumpkin by about 21. Hmm. Then you, you there's, won't be able coach, to stop. I, I, there's coaches lockpick. We'll there's, give him yep. that one. Yep. <laughs> so he, here's my thought on this one, guys. I think that Mason Sullins is going to have to be helped out by somebody else on the offensive side of the football for Lumpkin County just because White County is going to key on the run. So mm. it's going to be, can Cal Faulkner throw the ball and can he do enough with his feet to allow Mason to get his yards? I think they do. Rivalry game close, though, in the burial ground. Lumpkin it? by like a touchdown. Is it? Hey, he knows. He's a Lumpkin guy. Caleb? No, oh, it's me. No, no. Oh, it's whoever. Me. Uh, White County leads this series 40-12-1, I think. Do they that get is their, accurate. Do they get their 41st win in this series? I think not. Indians roll in this one. Oh, am I all by myself here? All by yourself. I, I like White County in this spot. Mm. I, just, I, I think mm. this is a great spot for yeah. them. I mean – they're a balanced offensive team. Lumpkin's got to stop the run and the pass, which is something that they really haven't faced this year. Wesleyan, great passing team. Gilmer, great rushing team. They haven't really faced Hart County running the ball team. They haven't really faced that team that was very balanced and quite the way White County is. White County has really uh, – everybody's taking Lumpkin County in this mm. game, so White County's coming in as the underdog. I, I just really like the spot here. For the Warriors. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to take it. White County it. by three points. I knew it. I That's can't right. wait for the scoreboard is show it, on Friday, is Caleb. It We're going to have fun with East Jackson and Lumpkin. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. It's going to be great. And listen, if Heath Webb calls me out, I will accept it. If, oh, they, win by, if they win by 30 and he wants to poke at me on the scoreboard show, <laughs> Coach, carte blanche, come at me. I'll be ready for it. But I, I, I like the spot for White. I really do. I think this is a good team. In a good spot this week, they are a good team with an is, opportunity to pull the upset. Look, is I it, agree with everything you said. I that's a, a you know, but I'm, is it you know. Wesleyan or Wesleyan? Oh, geez. it's an S. It's, an S. it's not a Z. It's a West. Don't make it's not a Z. Hey, hey, let's guy. get to the yes, sir. I know why he was late coming into the program this morning. It's because he was outside smoking crack. Oh, <laughs> 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 it's wow. reason to make that pick. Oh my! Oh man! <laughs> Oh, oh, called out. Wow. Oh, just, man. just let that. Man, I'm telling you. That's, man. Funny. That's funny. That's our first crack reference in three years of this show. Or whatever. Well, you did You did go with your butt a while ago. Oh, so well, I mean, Why did you have to do that, <laughs> Bo? Why did you have to take it there? Listen, I don't know if he's going to have the best picks of anybody we've had guest picker, but he definitely wins the award yeah. for most entertaining. Yeah, oh, my gosh. 100%. Ed- edging, edging out Joe Dix for that. Yeah, Joe yeah. Dix was great, but, Coach, you've taken this to a new level. I, I will hey, say. You're welcome. Well, Bo, Bo said he needed the ratings to go up. <laughs> we needed some help here. <laughs> All right, let's get to the final pick of the show, Coach, and it is Commerce at Woo. Elbert in a big-time Region 8A Division One game. This should be a fun game right here. Now you got two seven and one teams, basically region, along with Raven County, who got smoked last week by Elbert. But region pretty much is on the line. You know, you have Elbert County, who's led by the quarterback Brandon Scarborough. I think he's about 160 yards a game. They've got a really good running back up there, the Jakari Barnett. Um, just creeped over a thousand yards last week. Uh they are a well-balanced football team passing and, and running. Um, Commerce is, of course, led by Jaden Baby Goat Daniels, um, over 1,000 yards. you got Tyshawn Wiggins, who's over 1,000 yards fullback. Now, again, both of these players took last week off. And I've 
told y'all that story. Right. Mm-hmm. But they took last week off, or or Jaden Daniels probably would be close to being top of the list of rushing this week in the state. Probably. Had, because probably. he would have racked up three, 400 yards Yeah, last probably, week. probably. Um, the, the problem I see for Elbert is they're giving up 24 points a game. Um, the defense is not really that great. Now, what you're going to see is you're going to see a lot of probably Tyshawn Wiggins up the middle, up the middle. It looks boring to watch, but he hits you like a bag of rocks. So if, if you're a defensive line and you're just getting beat by this bag of rocks just constantly, constantly, yeah. and then you then you let Jaden Daniels come through there and all he needs is a crease, and then that, that kid is gone. Yeah. And so that's that's the way they played this all, all year. So what I'm looking at, it's probably going to come down to a – and y'all knew I was going to say what I'm about to say. It's probably going to come down to a late field goal. Oh, there it is. There it is. There, it is. there, there we is. go. Yeah. There it is. Commerce has a very good field goal kicker. Very, very good field goal kicker. Probably going to come down to that. Commerce probably 31-28. All right. Walker, we're going to let you go next here. I, I agree with you 100%, Coach. And the Granite Bowl, it's a tough place to play. It's going to come down to special teams. I think Commerce has that better aspect of the game. Give me the Tigers to win a close one and put a real stranglehold on the region title. Seth? I, I kind of like the uh, analogy that Coach, when I went and talked to them at Commerce, used, you know, battering Ram. He's going to beat the snot out of out of you with Wiggins, and then that's going to leave room for a little arrow to slip in. So um, I'm going with Commerce. Whew, this is a hard one. Um, the last real balanced team Commerce faced was Hebron. They gave up 31 points. I'm going to go against the grain here. I love the Tigers. I love the Tigers and what they're doing. So you're going with covers? But I'm going to go with Elbert in okay. the Granite Bowl. Okay. Coach, wouldn't shock me if Ivy is the difference in this one. All right, I'm going with Commerce as I'm going with Commerce in this one uh, over Elbert, even though Elbert did smoke Raven last week. But El- Commerce with this one. Elbert's defense had a great night against Raven County. This is a completely different completely kind different. of offense that they're facing this week. One of the reasons I like uh, – Pickens actually over Dawson, but we don't have time to circle back to that. But I like Coach, Commerce this week. Coach, thanks for joining us, man. As uh, not Pickens, uh, Gilmer over Gilmer over Dawson. That was great, Pickens. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll get to the locks right, coming up next. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you, thanks, guys. Coach. What a great guest, by the way. Well, it was a great guest. Oh. Uh, Boy, you know, I mean, the fan mail is going to be interesting. Yeah. But for as far as entertainment value, the I mean, comments on this video are going to be very fun to read. I think so. Do we have to do like that disclaimer? <laughs> <laughs> opinions on this show do not necessarily reflect <laughs> the opinions of, of us four. Picker do not do not reflect the opinions of the rest of us. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, uh, I, I, who knew Coach Harbor was going to be that good? That was good. Wow, that was good. I mean. You know, we needed a commerce person for our picks for yeah. this week because that, I think we've all thought that was the best game of the, of the week. Uh, but, you know, soccer coach, who knew? Who, who knew? knew? Hey, we've got to pick some more here, though. Phew. It's our Locks of the Week segment. Yes, brought to you by no one. Because nobody will sponsor this show. <laughs> I, wonder Jeff, why. I wonder why. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, I wonder why. <laughs> Jeff, you're the, hey, we're award winning. We are. Yes. We it are. Is. We it are is. award winning. Yes. Jeff, what's your lock? What's your week? lock? What is my lock? Listen, I tell you what, this is a this was some really we tough lines. This is how every lock segment with Jeff starts. Yeah. It starts yeah. with it's Jeff really looking down. I tell it you, is. this is really tough. It is. But I really think that Commerce Elbert game, I mm. while I you know, yes, I picked the Blue Devils mm. and they are a minus nine. I don't think it's gonna be that big of a margin. I'm gonna take Commerce plus the nine points. I think it, it it could come down to a field goal, like Coach said, and it could come down to Commerce kicking that field goal. So, But I, I still like the Blue Devils at home, and I'm going to take the plus nine. Look, I picked the Panthers. I'm going with Union County. Union County is plus one. Yeah, plus one. Yes. You, so you basically you, yeah, just an you, outright pick them. Yeah. All right, so my, my yeah. most bold pick this week was taking White County over Lumpkin County. To illustrate my confidence in that, White County is mm. plus 12, and I'm not touching it. Uh, I'm going to go with North Forsyth <laughs> minus four at Habersham Central. Not touching. Man. You yeah. picked them to win. But the I know, story I that know. you told us earlier in the show, wow. Caleb. I, I, the stand story. By it. I stand by it. I just don't have the confidence That's trying to, to have it your cake lock. and eat it too. It right? is. It's called hedging your bet. Yeah. yeah, I see that. That's a big hedge. 
<laughs> Gainesville's going to beat Shiloh by whatever number they want to beat mm. them by. The fact that they have North Forsyth next week, they're going to try and put a real big stamp on Huge. the season and show what they can do offensively. Gainesville minus 45. Woo! Yeah, you, know, you begged for that lock to be put on here. Yeah, he really minute. did because he I begged. because I think Gainesville is just going to do whatever they want to do, and Shiloh's going to have no answer. <laughs> They're going to bully uh, Shiloh the way Bo bullies us. Is you that mean, what you're saying? You mean the low? The, the low, low. sixty three to seven. Final but, score. Oof. Which is a bigger bully, Gainesville or Bo? Rawr. <laughs> Of all, the, of all the stupid ways you could have responded to that, you <laughs> said no sense you said roar like a five year old. Like, Ooh, <laughs> Seth, what's your lock? I mean, I don't have many choices here, do I? Well, you, you can do always you can your pick locks. opposite of somebody. Yeah, you can. Oh, that's that's a good point. I can. Mm. Mm. I don't so think I will East though. Jackson, you, you took East Jackson. Jackson. I did taste. East, I did. I did take East Jackson. I did take East Jackson. Lumpkin minus twelve still on the table. I don't know about that one. I'm kind of with you. I don't really want to touch that one. Do it. Do <laughs> Should it. I? Just do it. Do see. it. You picked East Jackson to win. I know I did. I know I did. You know what? Yeah, give me East Jackson. Mm, talk to give me to East it. Jackson minus one. Yep. East Jackson minus one. Directly opposite of Bo. All right. Does that do it? That's it for the locks, wow. you guys. That was quick. And you know what? That's it for this show. Thank, thank goodness. Thank goodness. Whew. Where's our show ending music? Yeah, will we, have, will we music? have a show next week after oh, the fan there it mail? Is. I thought there had been budget cuts for a second. Yeah, too. After the fan mail, will we have a show next week? Fan mail. Yes, we'll have a okay, show. Okay, all right. That's good. Yeah, minus. It's going to be an exciting show. I already know. Exciting. Happy Halloween show for you. And and where are you going to be, Walker? Somewhere in the Caribbean? We, we'll find out. We'll uh, find out Oh, next yeah. Week. Hey, what's on the tailgate show, Caleb? Well, we're going to hear from both coaches ahead of that White County, Lumpkin County matchup. And, uh, you know, outside of that, just the usual. Just eating barbecue, talking oh, football, yeah, having course. fun. Free food for you. Yeah, It's great. Mm, yeah, Stop it's by. Great. Hey, by the way, uh, radio games coming up this week, AM 550 Jackson County at Lanier FM 102.9 East Forsyth at Madison County, and the low at Gainesville no. over on 94.5. Well, well, two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> Late. Hey, look, follow us on Twitter, formerly known as X, or whatever it's supposed That's to X, be. Strike that, reverse yeah, it. Okay. <laughs> Willy Wonka moment one. there. Anyway, at Friday game night, we'll be posting scores throughout the night, uh, live updates from wherever we are out in the world of high school football, and also go to the website, accesswdun.com after the game, and check out stories Video highlights, photos, and more for the entire crew. Enjoy week number 10 of high school football. Bye-bye. Am I supposed to salute to... <laughs> what a great... <laughs> can you freeze that like the end of an 80s sitcom? Yes, I can, and yes, I will. <laughs>